friends, welcome to another episode of Let's Draw Race Cars. I'm Boris, and I'm here at my house. We're staying indoors, staying home, staying healthy, staying safe. It's our lunch hour. Why don't we pick up some old hobbies? Why don't we pick up some new skills? Let's draw some things. We've drawn a lot of race cars. If this is your first time watching, you should go back to YouTube, search for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing or for Boris Draws, and you'll find all of our old episodes where you can draw all the race cars. Today we're going to draw the things that put the race cars together. The nuts and bolts, the gas pedal, the brake pedal, things that drivers use to go fast. Because even in a drawing, you have to put all the pieces together to make the final product. There's people working at the shop uh, safely today, building race cars for Indianapolis this weekend. Well, they're already built for Indy, thankfully. You don't, you don't, you don't wait till that last minute to build them, but that's where we're going this weekend. Tomorrow we will draw Indianapolis, the speedway, the famous speedway. So join us tomorrow. But today, let's get some parts together, huh? Let's get things together here. Who's out there watching? Thank you for all the comments and the retweets. It's good to see you all out there today. Ready for another day of drawing. I want you to start with three lines. One, two, three. Little lines like this. Got it? We're going to draw our first set of parts for our race car. There's uh, Daniel's back. Looks like swim practice got fixed for Daniel. He's, he's now able to join us live. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Danny and Lynn and Tony and Devin, Matthew, JJ, Joe. Time to draw, time to learn some skills. Today we're going to put my tried and true theory of art to the test because my theory is that anybody can draw whatever they want as long as they can find some shapes within the, the, the figure that they already know how to draw, right? Like if you're drawing an eye, well, eyes are kind of shaped like footballs a little bit, right? So you can just draw a football shape and then you got an eye. Well, today we're going to draw, we're going to start with a gas pedal, a brake pedal, and a clutch pedal. Three important things the drivers use, of course, to win races like Denny Hamlin did on Sunday. So you have everything together. Jack's out there. Evan's out there. Michael's out there. Hi, everybody. Let's get started, all right? The one all the way to the right, which pedal is that? Well, it's the gas pedal. So we need the, uh, the bar that holds the gas pedal. It's going to go like this. So we need to add a few more lines to each of those lines we made on there, okay? Next, each, each pedal is shaped a little bit differently. And in each car, with each driver, they have a different preference. So we're going to, uh, we're going to draw a skinnier gas pedal like this. And it's going to be a rounded rectangle. So it's a rectangle with rounded corners. And it's going to go like this. Okay. We'll just start with our basic shapes. So it's a rectangle. Some gas pedals on race cars are really little, like this. Some are a little wider. It really depends on the driver. Now the brake pedal, they usually want that brake pedal to be pretty big. Okay? Because if you need that brake pedal, you want to be able to find it really quickly. You don't want to be searching around. So let's draw that brake pedal a little bit wider. Actually a lot wider, like three times wider than the gas pedal. Okay? There we go. Again, most times when you draw a rectangle, they have spiky edges like this, right? But we're rounding it off for these like this. Now my theory is that, you know, you don't want to hit your foot against a spiky edge, right? That's, that's what my theory is for why the pedals are, are, are rounded. All right. Let's see. Preston, yeah, Daniel's out there congratulating Ty Gibbs on a big win at Pocono. I haven't forgotten about you, Ty. We might have to draw Ty Gibbs' ARCA car that he's tearing it up with. Good job. All right, now the, the clutch pedal is a little bit smaller over here than the, the gas pedal. It's going to be about like that. A little more of like square shape. Now here's something important, though, on race cars about their pedals. They're a little bit different than the pedals on our street cars. Sometimes the gas pedal has a bar that goes like this that's on top of the pedal that the driver can use if the pedal sticks. So I want you to draw a bar like that. See that? It's a bar that goes across the top and the driver can put his foot on it and lift the pedal in case it gets stuck down and the car just wants to go by itself. So that exists on some race cars. 
But the other important thing, what's up Terry out there? There's Preston and Andrew. Thank you so much for all the congratulations. Hope you're drawing along with us. Hope you're posting your pictures, your drawings in our comments if you can. All right. The other thing on pedals that's important is they have holes in them. That's right. They drill holes in the pedals. Can anybody tell me why they would do that? Put that in the comments. I'm going to start drawing holes. Now these are just circles. We're going to do two rows of them on the gas pedal, five rows of them on the brake pedal, and two rows, two rows on the clutch. So here's what I'm talking about. We're just drawing a hole in there, a circle. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if anybody can tell me why in the world would we drill holes in our gas pedals and brake pedals and things like that, I, I, it's just crazy, isn't it? We make it look like Swiss cheese. Who out there thinks they know why? All right, just drawing some holes in there. I know it's kind of crazy, but that's what we're doing. All right. Zach got it. Zach's out there. Weight reduction. That's right. We, we are trying to find any places we can take weight out of the car to make it lighter and, uh, and make it go faster. Now NASCAR has weight rules, so you can only go so light. But guess what? If I take weight out of one place, that means I can put it somewhere else that helps the car handle better. Does that make sense? So if the pedals, if we want the, the weight to be back on the left rear or on the left front tire. We don't want them where the pedal is, so we take weight out of the pedal and maybe we'll find a way to put it somewhere else. So that's why we we take out those that metal that's in the in the pedal. The metal in the pedal. Good job, Zach. That was Zach's first comment. He's, he was waiting back there. He wasn't saying much, but he came out right at the right moment and dropped some mad knowledge on us. All right. Let's see here. Worth got it right too. Preston got it right. Jack and Amanda got it right. Daniel's got it right. It's, it's about speed. It doesn't make the car faster just removing the holes, but, uh, but it does help us handle better. Next, let's just fill it in with some silver or some uh, gray or whatever color you have. I already covered one of my holes. Oh, well. We're just going to fill in those pedals. I bet these pedals get hot, by the way. Drivers wear heat deflecting booties and they uh, they really help keep the driver's feet cool a lot of metal down there on the feet now the easier way I'm gonna do this I'm gonna cover up my holes here and I'm going to erase them later because uh, it's gonna take a while to, to color around them And by the way if it takes you a long time to color in these big shapes you can save it for the end you know what to do now so you can save it for the end if you need to I can go pretty quick on my iPad here with Procreate app, but if you're using colored pencils or crayons or anything like that, sometimes it takes a long time to fill in those colors, doesn't it? Look at that, I can just, uh, I can just erase my hole in there. All right. All right, now those brake pedals are nice and light, and we can set up that car in a different way. All right, we're not done. We got to draw some more. Some more parts and pieces, because it's the part and pieces of the race car that really bring it together, right? Jack says it looks like Swiss cheese. That's right. Let's draw a lug nut now. The lug nut is, of course, what keeps the wheel on the hub on the race car, right? We have five of them, and we have to keep them tight. Or else, as you saw on Saturday, Denny Hamlin was worried about a loose one. It caused a really bad shake of bad vibration. So with this lug nut... We are going to do a hexagon, which means six sides. So draw a line like that, and then a line like this. See how far apart they are, and see how short they are? See that? This is one way to do it. And then you can draw another set of those lines on the opposite side, like this. Look how they don't touch at all. They'll touch here in a second. We'll make them fixed, but that's how I start. I'm going to show you another way in a second if this way is too hard for you. After this, you just connect them like that, and like that, and like that. And now you have the outer edge. 
and that's actually an octagon. That's not a hexagon, is it? No, that's an octagon. It's like a stop sign. And then you draw a circle in there, like that. All right. So that's the top view of a lug nut. Now to make this look 3D, to make it look like it has different shapes and it has dimension and depth, here's what you do. Draw a line like this, and then repeat your lines around it like that. And now your lug nut starts to have some shape to it. On the inside, also do a half moon shape like this. You see that? And now we have the sides of our lug nut. That's pretty cool, I think. Just like that, you drew a 3D looking shape on a flat surface like a piece of paper. Yeah, that's looking good. Now lug nuts, they're yellow and they have some pink on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a yellow and I'm going to choose a bright yellow up here. And I'm going to color the top face of our lug nut in bright yellow up here like this. There we go. And now on the sides I'm going to choose darker yellow. And actually I'm going to make it a little bit orange because if you start getting too dark on yellow it kind of looks brown. But we're going to go in here we're going to choose like a brownish bronzy kind of shade. And I'm going to color in the sides. And this is really going to make it look like it's uh, 3D because this is different shading and shadows. The light is bouncing off the lug nut in different ways here. Look at there. That's a pretty good looking lug nut if you ask me. Don't forget the inside. The inside here where the threads are so that it spins. You can put it in there and then make that darker. Make sure you make that one of the darkest parts because there's not much light getting into that area of the lug nut. See that? I might even put a couple little shades down here just to make it look a little dirty like it's a used lug nut. If you ever get a chance to visit our shop hopefully we'll open up here sometime soon and be back to normal but if you ever get a chance to visit our shop we actually have race used lug nuts that were actually used at pit stop practice and in the race so make sure you visit us once that is able to happen again. Devin wants us to give away lug nuts. Maybe one day, maybe I'll stop by the shop and grab a few and we'll be able to do that. Preston, do I work with Martin, Kyle, Denny, and Eric? Yes, I do. Work with those fine gentlemen. Good drivers. Nice guys. All right. There we go. Now, one more thing I want to do on this lug nut is I want to pink, pick hot pink. And I'm going to draw hot pink around the edge here. And what that is, is that is paint that our pit crews put on the lug nuts just to make them all the more visible because during a race a lot of dust fluids dirt and grime and rubber builds up on our race cars and we have to be able to see those lug nuts on the pit stops there's actually people at the shop whose job it is to clean these race cars out after they get back from the track some tracks they'll be scooping out big handfuls of rubber out of the wheel wells and dust and all sorts of stuff they'll have to pressure wash it down so there's a lot of work that goes into the car after the race and uh, just like the beginning before the race too so a lot of little details in your drawings you can use to tell a cool story about racing All right, so there's a lug nut these are not to scale thankfully the lug nuts are not as big as gas pedals and brake pedals these are just illustrations but there you go there's some there's some drawings JJ Joe says he found some lug nuts at the Kansas race from Truex's stops. That's pretty cool. And then Worth, yeah, Worth says they glue them onto the tires. So they put some glue back here on the lug nuts so that they're there when they're ready to change a wheel. Well, I appreciate you watching. These have been some fun parts that we've drawn. We've used a lot of our shapes to bring them together. We've used a lot of colors to really make them look 3D. These aren't the first race car parts we've drawn. We've drawn the engine and brakes and the exhaust and the gas tank. How about a uh, our final our final part will be a shock absorber. You know there's people 
on our race team who their main job is to deal with shock absorbers and to rebuild them. You know what the, you know what they're for? Well, in our cars on the street, they're to make the ride a little bit better and smoother. But on the race cars, they actually don't make the ride smoother. They make it rougher because they stick the car to the track. When a car hits a, hits a bump, it wants to bounce back up, right? But the shock absorber keeps it stuck down, stuck down to the track. And that's what you want on a race car. So draw a big, tall number 11 for me. And I'm going to show you the shock absorber here. My buddy Ron on the race team, I'm thinking about him. He retired from being a, a specialist with the, with the shocks, but he would always show me how to do it. Also, Mr. Chris Chase out there, he's, he's another buddy. So at the bottom of your number 11, draw a little curve, kind of like this. All right? And then at the top, draw the same curve. This shape is called a cylinder. It's kind of like a, uh, a chip can or a, or a drink. And then draw another curve at the top. Okay? Kind of an oval. That's going to be the top of our shock absorber. And then where it bolts to the car, it has this kind of C shape up here. And that's where it, where it bolts to the car. So you can put that little shape up there. Okay. Up in this cylinder here, there's fluid that works against the pressures that the car is going through. And it regulates how much movement the car can have over bumps and over over shifts of weight. At the bottom, I want you to draw number 11 again, but even skinnier down here, even skinnier. Because this is the shaft that goes up into the cylinder on the shock absorber. And then again, draw your circle at the bottom so there's a place to connect it. There we go. That's a pretty good looking shock absorber. Now that's not exactly true to spec. Some of my engineering friends out there are going to know I missed a lot of parts, but that's just a simple illustration to show you what a shock absorber looks like. And that shock absorber is going to be up here behind the wheel of the car. Preston says that his pop-pop lived near Martin's family in New Jersey. That's pretty cool, Preston. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. You can color this shock absorber with some goldish bronze colors, kind of like our lug nut. Up there, I like to kind of make them look like this because it's metal. Put some streaks up there. Go up here and pick a darker color like this. A lot of these that I've seen kind of have this this darker color look to them up here. And then there's silver down here at the bottom. There's all sorts of colors you can find with shock absorbers, but that's what I'm going to choose for mine. There we go. Well, just like that, we've drawn some parts and pieces of the race cars that help us get to victory lane. Tomorrow, we're going to draw one of my favorite speedways, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, because that's where we're racing this weekend on the 4th of July. I hope you all have enjoyed this. Make sure you send me your drawings and show me the creations you make and the stories you tell with your artwork. Thanks for watching. Tanner, good to see you, buddy. Thank you all, Devin and everyone, for, for watching. And we will uh, we'll get back to you next time.